Okay, uh, so welcome to uh, uh, welcome my friends. And here uh, in previous lecture, if, uh, we have already discussed the uh, successive approximation method to solve uh, Froedeum integral equation of second kind, and uh, we have uh, seen uh, this thing that we have uh, y of x is equal to uh, say f of x plus uh, lambda times uh, k of x t uh, f of uh, uh, y t dt not f t it is uh, y t dt d of t here and uh, we have seen that by approximation here we have created a approximation scheme like this y n plus 1 x equal to f of x plus uh, lambda times k of uh, x of t and y n t d t and we have shown that under certain condition here we assume that this kernel k x t and this function f x both are uh, square integrable function and uh, in previous class we have seen the uh, convergence criteria here we have seen that if modulus of lambda b is less than 1 then uh, this series is going to be this uh, y n x will converge to y of x absolutely and uniformly. So, this convergence is uniform here. So, here uh, b is basically what? b is basically modulus of k x t whole square d x d t. So, here this is the b rotation and uh, if lambda modulus of lambda b is less than 1 this convergence is uniform. Now, uh, we want to show that uh, if we uh, approximate the solution of this by n plus 1 nth approximation here then of course, uh, there should be a truncation error we try to see that what should be the truncation here. So, here we say that uh, if the series a, it can be written as like this. So, here y x equal to f of x m equal to 1 to n lambda m k m x t f t t. So, this is uh, your um, uh, uh, general term here and r n x I am writing here after n plus 1 at term. So, here we can say that this term if we uh, uh, truncate our y of x by this uh, nth uh, term we can say that there is a truncation error and that truncation error is bounded by this quantity modulus of r n m c 1 modulus of lambda n plus 1 b to power n uh, divided by this. So, this we can see it like this that your r n is going to be what r n is basically uh, your summation your m equal to 1 to n lambda to power m and it is inside your k m x t f of t d t and oh sorry uh, here limit will start from n plus 1. So, it is n plus 1 to infinity. So, the modulus of r n x you can find out by uh, so this is going to be less than r equal to now here it is um, summation uh, m equal to n plus 1 to infinity modulus of lambda to power m here and modulus of this k m x t f of t d t uh, d t here and this thing right. So, this uh, we can calculate uh, this quantity we can calculate using uh, previous analysis and we can say that this is uh, uh, this will reduce to. So, here let me write it what is the uh, modulus value k m x t f of t uh, d t square of this. So, square of this is uh, given as capital M square and this is what c 1 square and it is going to be uh, b to power 2 m minus 2. So, you can say that this uh, this is going to be bounded by lambda to power m this is uh, you can say the energy is bounded by say m c 1 and b to power m minus 1 right and uh, yeah. So, we can say that there is something missing here and lambda to power m is also there is it ok. Then uh, you can write it here this is what this is the geometric series here. Uh, whose uh, first term is started at n plus 1. So, we can simply write uh, the summation here as the first term divided by 1 minus common ratio. Common ratio is basically modulus of lambda and b 
right. So, you can uh, uh, you can simplify and you can see that the modulus of R n is given by bounded by m c 1 modulus of lambda to power n plus 1 b n that is your n plus 1 at term divided by 1 minus common ratio here that is modulus of lambda b ok. Now, here uh, we uh, uh, since convergence is uniform here. So, I can write that this integral and uh, the summation can be interchangeable. So, uh, if you remember our solution is given by this uh, Newman series y of x equal to f of x plus lambda uh, here we are interchanging the summation and integral sign we are taking uh, summation sign inside and we can write it like this. So, here this notation we are calling this as uh, gamma x t lambda f of t d t where gamma x t lambda is given by uh, defined by this. 0 uh, 1 to infinity lambda to power m minus 1 k m x t here. I am taking lambda here then that is why this lambda to power m is truncated uh, uh, appearing here. So, we are saying that uh, we are calling this uh, gamma x t lambda as resolvent kernel. Again uh, we uh, we can prove that this gamma x t lambda is uh, given by this um, power series in terms of uh, this uh, lambda here and we can say that this is an anarchicum function of lambda here and this convergence we have already seen that it is convergent in the uh, for modulus of lambda b is less than 1. So, this is also an anarchic function of lambda uh, whose radius of convergence is uh, given by this formula modulus of lambda is less than b inverse b is defined uh, earlier right. So, here uh, we can uh, say that if solution is uh, unique we can say that uh, not only solution is unique even this um, uh, resolvent kernel is also unique. So, for that uh, let us uh, say that we have two resolvent kernel corresponding to the same solution and call it uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2 and we try to show that uh, this gamma 1 is only equal to gamma 2. For that uh, we just equate y of x here which is obtained by gamma 1 and uh, y of x which is obtained by this gamma 2 and since these are equal we can say that uh, these are equal. So, f x f x will be cancelled out and you can write it uh, that lambda not uh, we are assuming that it is uh, 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 some non zero constant and we are writing this uh, as uh, uh, denoting psi x t lambda as uh, difference of these two and we can write it that psi x t lambda naught f t d t. Here I am using a particular value lambda naught for this lambda and this is true for all uh, function f of t here. So, uh, here we can choose this f of t as uh, complex conjugate of this psi x t lambda. So, since this is true for every f t we can say that even uh, it should be uh, true for it is uh, f t which is given as complex conjugate of this psi star. If we use it then we have uh, this last uh, 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 equation given as uh, 14 is reduced to this integral of psi x t lambda naught square d t equal to 0. So, here this is uh, not equality uh, this is uh, equivalent is not correct word it is equality here. So, here we can say that this is possible only when when this integrand is ideally equal to 0. So, if it is uh, integrand is ideally equal to 0 means your uh, uh, this gamma 1 is ideally equal to gamma 2. So, it means that uh, under the condition that modulus of lambda b is less than 1 your solution is unique your um, resolvent kernel is unique where resolvent kernel is defined by equation number 12 is it ok. Now, uh, there are certain mode uh, properties corresponding to your resolvent kernel and the solution and we just writing here and we say that for every L2 kernel k x t they correspond a unique resolvent kernel gamma x t lambda. This uniqueness we have already proved and we which is gamma x t lambda is defined by this m equal to 1 to infinity lambda to power m minus 1 k m x t and uh, we can prove that this is absolutely and uniformly convergent for all values of x and t in the circle modulus of lambda is less than b inverse and furthermore we have just proved that if f x is also an L2 function then the unique L2 solution of the Frodom integral equation 1 valid in the circle modulus of lambda uh, less than b inverse that we have proved in the previous lecture ok. So, uh, this uh, proof that uh, this gamma x t lambda uh, is uh, uh, convergent in this uh, reason. Um, I can give you a small hint that is all uh, I can simply write it here as this ok. So, here if you look at uh, gamma x t uh, lambda 
uh, it is denoted as summation m equal to 1 to infinity lambda to power m minus 1 uh, k m x t right. So, here we take modulus here and take the square here. So, this is less than or equal to modulus here and square here and then you can find out k m x t and square of this again using the cauchy schwarz inequalities which is uh, uh, it is like k of x xi um, um, square d xi and here we have k uh, m minus 1 uh, xi t square d xi here and using the bond of this. So, that you can do and you can say that now please remember here it is uh, different from uh, C 1, this is not a C 1, this is uh, uh, some finite quantity, but it is different. C 1 is defined by what? C 1 is defined as k x xi uh, t of x. So, this is your C 1. So, we can call this as any quantity, we let us say this is E 1, E 1 I am denoting as uh, modulus of uh, k x xi uh, square d xi as some E 1. So, using these notation you can prove that uh, this series is also uh, absolutely and uniformly convergent for the same bound that is modulus of lambda less than b inverse ok. I am not giving any proof of this ok. Now, uh, there is one more uh, theorem which is important to know that uh, if gamma x t lambda is a resolvent kernel of this Fredholm integral equation, then uh, this gamma x t lambda is also satisfying the uh, uh, this integral equation given in terms of gamma x t lambda and uh, defined as gamma x t lambda is equal to k x t plus lambda a to b k x z gamma z t lambda d z. There is one uh, and this uh, is known as uh, Fredholm, uh, Fredholm identities and there is one more uh, Fredholm identities given uh, in terms of gamma x t lambda. So, that we uh, we write when it is required ok. So, this is uh, the integral equation satisfied by resolvent kernel. Now, uh, there is uh, one more theorem which I am writing just for sake of completeness that uh, resolvent kernel satisfy the integral differential equation given by this ok. Why we are calling integral integral differential equation there is a differentiation of uh, gamma x t lambda with respect to lambda is given in terms of integral e equation. So, that is why it is integral differential equation. So, uh, it is just for completeness. Now, uh, we try to solve some problem with the help of the theory developed earlier. Uh, by the way, here I just want to say one word for the theory part that uh, before doing any problem, we may start attacking the problem itself, but before attacking to any problem, we must know that there exist a solution and not only a solution, we should know that the uh, iterative procedure we are considering that should converge somewhere. Not only converge, it will converge to a unique limit. That is why we have discussed all the theory part. Now, let us utilize our theory and uh, try to discuss uh, these example. So, here we have y of x equal to f of x plus lambda 0 to 1 e to power x minus t y t dt. So, here your kernel is given in terms of e to power x minus t. So, k 1 is defined as this, you can define k 2 x t is like this. So, I hope uh, you remember the formula here. <coughs> so, what is your, uh, so k 1 x t is same as k x t. So, k x t is given as e to power x minus t and uh, k 2 x t is basically what? k 2 x t is basically integration of uh, k x t, k x i, k xi t d xi. Please remember here this is starting point x is a starting point here and point here is end point here and this and this is the integral variable. So, you can use this formula and you can find out k 2 x t which is um, if you simplify it is given by e to the power x minus t here a is 0 and b is 1 and if we proceed in a similar way we can say that k m x t is given by e to the power x minus t. So, once we have um, uh, mth iteration for this kernel then uh, we can write we can find out resolvent kernel, resolvent kernel is defined as lambda to power m minus 1 k m x t we can uh, we have already find out k m x t as e to the power x minus t and if you look at this is a um, uh, geometric series with common issue lambda. So, here uh, this will converge provided that modulus of lambda is less than 1 and we can say that gamma x t lambda is given by e to power x minus t 
uh, divided by 1 minus lambda and solution is given by y of x f of x uh, minus lambda divided by lambda minus 1 0 to 1 e to power x minus t f of t dt. So, once you know your uh, uh, mth iteration for kernel you can define resolvent kernel and you can write down your solution in terms of resolvent kernel and in this case it is coming out to be uh, given by equation number 16 is it okay. Now, let, uh, let us move to one more uh, non trivial uh, I can say this is quite trivial because here k 1 x t is coming out to be e to power x minus t and all these k 1 to k 1 is coming out to be e to power x minus t. Let us take uh, some uh, more difficult problem here and we say that here consider the second problem here uh, your k x t is given by 1 plus x into 1 minus t again it is not very difficult but anyway it is uh, not too easy also. So, here a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 1 and uh, again we want to write this solution here. So, here uh, k 1 x t is same as k of x t. So, it is uh, 1 plus x 1 minus t d, uh, 1 minus t here and you can find out k 2 x t is what a to b k x i k 1 xi t d xi. So, when you solve this it is simple integration and you can say that it is 2, to, uh, 2 by 3 1 plus x 1 minus t and if you keep on doing this you can see that this is a kind of pattern we are getting that k 3 is basically 2 by 3 square 1 plus x 1 minus t. So, if you look at here 3 corresponding to the second power of this quantity 2 by 3. So, if you define you will get k m x t is defined as 2 by 3 m minus 1 1 plus x 1 minus t and uh, if you find out the resolvent kernel resolvent kernel is given by this and you can put the uh, value of k m x t here and you can say that it is simple uh, 1 plus x 1 minus t and this summation. Now, this is again a geometric series uh, in terms of 2 lambda by 3. So, here uh, we can say that this will converge and summation is given by uh, 1 upon 1 minus common ratio that is 3 by 3 minus 2 lambda and this will converge only when this quantity is less than 1 or I can say that modulus of lambda 3 by 2 in this particular case your gamma x t lambda is given by this quantity. So, the gamma x t lambda is given by this provided modulus of lambda is less than 3 by 2. So, once you know your gamma x t lambda you can find out your solution and um, uh, he ok. So, you can uh, write down this solution here ok. Now, uh, let us uh, discuss uh, example number 3. Uh, here y of x uh, equal to 1 plus lambda 0 to 1 1 minus 3 x t y of t dt. If you remember we have uh, uh, discussed uh, this kind of problem for uh, f x uh, for general f of x there uh, we have assumed 1 is equal to f of x. If you look at this is the example with the separable kernel here k x t is given by 1 minus 3 x t and we have already uh, discuss the solution procedure uh, in the lecture of um, um, a separable kernel. We have already solved for uh, now here we are solving a particular case when f of x is equal to 1 here. So, again uh, as uh, we want to find out say resolvent kernel of this. So, for that k 1 x t is same as k x t it is given by 1 minus 3 x t. Similarly, you can find out k 2 x t and uh, it is given by this formula k x z k 1 z t d z. You uh, do not worry about this uh, k x z k x i whatever you simply remember only this thing that uh, the first uh, variable here will, uh, will, will be here and last uh, this second variable is will be here and uh, uh, here it is your integral variable ok. So, using this formula you can write down k 2 x t like this similarly you can calculate k 3 x t k 4 x t and so on and uh, when you calculate k 3 x t it is coming out to be uh, 1 by 4 k 1 x t similarly k 4 x t uh, is given in terms of k 2 x t. So, it is 1 by 4 k 2 x t. If you keep on doing this then you can see that odd um, all odd number of uh, iteration k 3 k 5 k 7 all are written in terms of k 1 x t. Similarly, you are even say k 2 k 4 k 6 all are written in terms of uh, even uh, that is k 2 x t. So, I can write is uh, write uh, resolvent kernel as gamma x t lambda as lambda power m minus 1 k m x t as this uh, 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 series k 1 x t plus lambda k 2 x t and so on and there we can put the value of k 3 k 4 and so on in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, I can write it like this. So, k 1 x t as it is lambda square uh, uh, and this is uh, k 2 x t and then uh, we are writing all odd terms together and odd 
even term together. So, here when you use the value of k3 xt, it is coming out to be 1 by 4 k1 xt. Okay. Similarly, k5 xt is you, you just look at your calculation k5 uh, xt is 1 by 4 square k1 xt. Similarly, k7 is 1 by 4 cube k1 xt. So, using this, you can find out this summation and it is coming out to be k1 xt times this and k lambda k2 xt times the same series. If you look at look at that, there, there is the same series here. And uh, if you look at this is a geometric series with the common ratio lambda square by 4. So, this will converge provided that modulus uh, lambda square is less than 4 or you can say that modulus of lambda is less than 2. So, you keeping this thing in mind that modulus of lambda by uh, modulus of lambda is less than 2, you can simplify and uh, this is written as uh, k1 xt plus uh, lambda k2 xt into 1 upon 1 minus lambda square by 4. And if you simplify uh, using k1 xt and k2 xt and it, it can be given by this. So, here once you have gamma xt lambda, you can write down the solution as y of x equal to f of x plus lambda 0 to 1 gamma xt lambda. So, gamma xt lambda is uh, uh, we can put it here provided that modulus of lambda is less than 4. So, uh, your solution if you simplify f x is given as 1 here. So, putting the value 1 here, you can say that y of x is equal to this quantity 4 plus 2 lambda 2 minus 3 x divided by 4 minus lambda square provided this condition modulus of lambda less than 2. And we can say that this will uh, uh, converge only when, when we have modulus of lambda less than 2. So, it means that we do not have any uh, say criteria to say that if mod what happened if modulus of lambda equal to 2 or modulus of lambda greater than 2. But if you remember the same problem we have uh, discussed in, in, in the in the case of um, um, uh, separable kernel. There we have uh, we are able to find out the solution of this in the case when modulus of lambda is equal to 2 or you can say lambda equal to lambda equal to minus 2 and even when, when modulus of lambda is not equal to uh, uh, 2 modulus of lambda is not equal to 2. So, it means that here this is a quite uh, method of successful approximation is quite useful, but not in all case. Here I can say that this is uh, uh, in this particular example your uh, method of separable kernel is quite useful that gives you solution for all values of modulus of lambda. Here in fact, you can check that for modulus of lambda less than 2. Uh, the method of uh, separable kernel and method of successive approximation both will match, but this will not give any result for modulus of lambda greater than 2 or modulus of lambda equal to 2. So, in that case this uh, since it is a problem of separable kernel. So, we suggest that whenever we have problem of separable kernel, we always use the method of uh, um, method of uh, uh, separable kernel and uh, uh, we may uh, say why uh, it is happening like this why we are not able to get uh, that uh, the entire uh, reason for modulus of lambda. So, if you remember uh, in uh, method of separable kernel we are getting solution like this we are getting solution like y of x uh, equal to sum of f of x here it is 1 plus um, some um, uh, lambda times uh, c 1 minus 3 c 2 x kind of thing. If you remember we have we can do it like this if you apply a method of successor uh, sub separable kernel you can get it solution like this. And when you find out uh, your c 1 and c 2 then you have say d lambda and here we have c 1 and c 2 and it is uh, uh, some integration f of x d of x plus integration x f of x d of x right 0 to 1 here limit is 0 to 1 here and you can find out your c 1 and c 2. So, if you remember I can say that here your lambda is there right. Uh, uh, so, here we can say that it is given in terms of c 1 c 2 you can find out in terms of your uh, uh, numerator and denominator numerator is also given in terms of lambda denominator is also given in terms of lambda. So, you can say that it is kind of uh, 
some function given in lambda divided by some function uh, given in terms of lambda. And if you uh, divide it, then you will have a function in terms of, uh, you can write it in terms of uh, say lambda, some polynomial function in terms of lambda. So, in uh, successive approximation, we are uh, writing our solution in terms of uh, your uh, series in terms of lambda. So, if you say that here, if we do this, then uh, this ratio will be valid when modulus of lambda is um, say uh, here we have some radius of convergence, here we have some of radius of convergence. So, this whole expression is valid when we have modulus of lambda less than or equal to uh, say any radius of convergence here. So, if you remember this will converge when modulus uh, this d lambda is non-zero when lamb modulus of lambda is uh, less than 2. So, that is why this uh, method of separable kernel and uh, method of approximation uh, su uh, successive approximation, approximation will match when modulus of lambda is less than 2. Is it okay? So, uh, but we suggest that whenever we have a problem with the separable kernel, we start uh, solving with the help of uh, method given in the uh, lecture, uh, uh, solving solution of a integral equation with the help of separable kernel. Is it okay? So, thanks for listening us and we will uh, we'll meet again in next lecture. Thank you.